this new episode of my creative journal, of Rive's creative journal. My name is Geneviève, Geneviève.Varsapin on Instagram, Varsapin on Ravelry, and you are on the YouTube channel of Rive Company, which is a shop dedicated to knitting and sewing and all you need to access those crafts, including classes and inspiration. Yes, so we are located near Montreal in Quebec. Before I start this episode, I wanted to uh, talk to you about something I read in a book called Care, written by Brooke McKellery, who, if you don't know her, is one of the hosts of the Slow Home podcast. It's a, pod a podcast I've already mentioned here because I love it. I love that podcast. Uh, it's hosted by her and her husband, Ben. And it's been, uh, it's a podcast that has been going on for many years and they cover all subjects of slow living. Uh, they conduct wonderful interviews with really relevant people, really wonderful discussions. I just, I really enjoy that podcast. And Brooke herself has written three books, which I have, asked for for Christmas and received so I've been reading them and it's such a it's such a quiet and soothing read so I really enjoy reading her books and I am reading Care currently which is her last one her most recent book and in this book she covers different subjects different things that you can uh, explore in your life that might have a good effect on you and a good effect by ripple effect on your close uh, relations and eventually ripple by ripple on your community and society in general. Things that could make society better and that are uh, accessible to you as an, an individual. So it's really, and this is just my take on that book, of course. It's what I understand it to be, um, but I really, really enjoyed that uh, reading this. And she has a chapter on making, which I found really relevant, and that I read at a moment where I needed it. Uh, I needed to read that and give some uh, add to my understanding of why why I enjoy making so much, why I think it's important. And sometimes when um, world events are unfolding, I lose touch with why it's, it's important. Like it's, uh, it, it seems unimportant to be knitting, to be sewing, to be making with my hands in general. Um, all the things that I do s start to seem irrelevant. Y y yeah, it's kind of easy to lose touch with why you do these things and why they matter and why you should keep doing it if that's what you like. So she gives a start of an answer in this book in the chapter on making and I found it really, really interesting. So first of all, she says that research has shown that making things can reduce stress, activate your parasympathetic nervous system and help us to feel calmer. This is really important. I find that it's really important as a parent as well um, to find ways to care for yourself on a daily basis. Uh, that, like, sure you can take care of yourself. Uh, you can send your child if you have, if you're lucky enough to be able to do this. You can send your child for an overnight at grandma's and take care of yourself in a deep way. But I find that I need to be the parent I want to be. I need to find. Uh, self-care but real not like good cream on my face and and a spa day but just real self-care I need to find it on a daily basis on multiple times in the day uh, to be able to yeah activate my parasympathetic nervous system and feel calmer and be the parent I want to be it helps your brain reward center to release dopamine a feel-good neurotransmitter, uh, foster feelings of pride and satisfaction as we learn and master new skills, very important, elevate your, our mood, 
can delay cognitive conditions such as dementia and Alzheimer's, decreases anxious rumination. That's a really important one for me. Uh, improves self-esteem and increased levels of self-efficacy. So all of that right there is uh, has really been occupying my, my thoughts recently um, about why it's important, why I want to make space for it in my life and not just drop it and be anxious all the time. So very interesting that she puts those words onto it. And she also goes to talk about the flow state. So if I can read a little bit here. Uh, have you ever been so absorbed in making or doing something that you lose track of time or that your body seemingly ceases to exist for a moment? That blissful state of engrossment is called a flow state. And much of the research around the role of creativity and happiness and mental well-being revolves around the idea of accessing it. So I experience that flow state when I'm in contact with music, so at a concert or a when I was a full-time musician, I would get into that state quite often. So I know what she means by um, being out of your body, out of time. I also access this when I am deep in a task of making, like deep in a sewing session, uh, when I have put away phones, and my phone and uh, other screens that are distracting me. When I really get into that moment, I experience that flow state, um, a good knitting session as well, uh, or home improvement. I really enjoy making with my hands uh, in the situation or gardening. So uh, I understand what she means by flow state. And um, there are, there is research to say that uh, when you get into that flow state, your brain is just unable to process any other information that is often non-essential. So all your stressors, all your uh, all those things that are triggering your anxiety, they just cannot access you when you are in that flow state. So it temporarily uh, relieves those discomforts and takes you out of the situation that leaves you in distress. Uh, yeah giving us a reprieve from discomforts and pains and worries that may otherwise plague us. And she goes on with an example, which is really what I wanted to share because that example, uh, I, I, I think is so um, deeply touching. So it's about soldiers in World War I. I didn't know that story and I find it really fascinating. So those soldiers, uh, millions were injured, badly wounded, uh, injured of PT injuries of PTSD as well. So deep uh, injuries that would last a lifetime. And uh, a lot of them were living for quite a long, a long time in convalescent homes. And there is an example that, so in the United Kingdom, they started to teach them handicrafts to help uh, relearning motor functions to help relieve stress and everything. So they learned letter work or basket weaving. And there are a hundred or more uh, soldiers, allied soldiers that were taught to embroider for a specific project. So they were taught to embroider and at some point they were giving a little piece to do. So a little piece of embroidery to work on. And they all worked on it separately, like in their own homes and she says beautifully like in their their own um how does she say it locked in their own struggles yeah i really love that phrasing so they were all in their own thing working on that little piece and then all those pieces were collected and put together by the royal school of needlework in london to make an altar front piece for saint paul's cathedral and I will try to insert a picture. It is uh, breathtakingly beautiful, that piece. And uh, it's, I think, yeah, uh, it's impressive. Not, not impressive, but I'm not grasping the right words, but I find it 
a big, a, a huge comfort to think of those men working on their little piece of embroidery and creating this beautiful altar front. All of them just working at their own little piece and it, it makes this huge significant piece in the end that can be used for different uh, services in... yeah. So that piece was lost dur during the Blitz uh, in London. So, uh, well, in fact, they, they thought it was lost, but it was put away for safekeeping, but they forgot where they put it, basically. And recently, quite recently, it was found again uh, and uh, restored and used. It was found just in time for all those 100 years uh, commemoration for the World War, the First World War. So it was found really just in time, which seems a bit like destiny or something. So I really, really enjoyed that story and I wanted to share it with you. It's just, it gives me more depth of meaning in just the, the simple, simple act of making things. On with my journal. So I have a lot of knitting and sewing to share. And first is this beautiful finished garment that I'm wearing that is everything I want it to be. So if you have been following me, I have talked a lot about this piece. It has been following me for more than a year, I would say. So it's something that I would, I would pick up and work on and then put away again and work on a bit because it's really intricate work. Uh, sometimes I felt like I needed, needed the challenge. I enjoyed the complexity of it and other times I would put it away to work on something really simple. Uh, it's the Sawyer Pullover by Sari Norlund and it's a joy of a pattern. Let me show you. It has these really intricate um, cable patterns. I really enjoy these cables. These zigzaggy ones here, I really like. These one with the bubbles. It's really gorgeous detailing. So you have a panel of cable that runs on both sides at the front and both sides at the back. And you have a simplified version on the sleeves. And between the panels, you have a uh, so a texture pattern, I forget the word for it, and uh, yeah, really beautiful finishings all over that pattern. It has a drop shoulder, so it's quite a boxy shape, and it runs straight uh, towards the bottom. Well, in fact, it's worked, um, it's a bottom up, so you start at the bottom with um, a tubular cast on which makes for a beautiful finish and the same for the sleeve you start at the end of the sleeve and work up and then you sew everything together at the shoulders and add that neckband which is folded and then sewed. I always enjoy a folded neckband it's really comforting to have that smooshiness around your neck. So yes a really really beautiful sweater that I knit for myself. I'm really happy with it. I hope it's gonna last me a lifetime, honestly. I always take good care of my knits, but this one, yeah, I feel it's just so me. <laughs> I really want it to uh, last a long, long time and I will take such good care of it. So it's a mix of yarn. I have used uh, Urso Rêverie, which is a discontinued base. It was 100% uh, merino, superwash merino. I don't tend to use superwash anymore, but it was a stash yarn. And uh, the color is pearl, and it's a really nice subtle purple gray. And I have, so it's a fingering weight. So I this is a DK pattern. So I needed to add something to get the right gauge. So I added some uh, Julie Aslan Nurtured Fine nurtured fine which is such a gorgeous yarn it's a lace weight and it's dyed in the wool so the fibers are dyed before they are uh, spun so it gives a huge depth of color uh, a 
it's so subtle. I really, really enjoy that yarn. I've added it to other projects uh, in the past because yeah, I love uh, the complexity it gives to my garments. So this is the color Courte Point, Nurtured Fine. Nurtured, if you don't know, it is a yarn by Julie Asselin, which is normally, I think, a worsted weight or even heavier than that. And she then developed this lace version, which I really like. And it usually comes on a cone, but I find it easier to knit from a ball, so I balled it up. Well, I have used four skeins of fingering in this sweater and I came really short. So it does eat up a lot of yarn with all the cables and the texture. Uh, and I have used three cones of Nurtured Fine, but I have quite a bit of leftover from the third one. So I'm going to find a project for this. I have one in mind. Uh, yeah, so what else to say? Just a very enjoyable knit. Uh, explanations were really clear. I It's the second pattern I knit from Sari Norhund and I really enjoy her aesthetic. Uh, yeah, it really speaks to me. So I might go and hunt, uh, hunt, <laughs> go and hunt on her Ravelry store for uh, another project because yeah, never disappoints. I think it's always, they are often a bit intricate and I really enjoy that kind of knitting when you are so proud of your end result. Yes, may take longer to do, but it's really worthwhile. So then, uh, works in progress. So I have a pair of socks on the needle and then I have a big project. So the pair of socks, um, I need to keep, I'm really not a sock knitter. It, uh, it often, these are projects that will sleep for a long time and then I will get them done in like three days because I want the socks. Uh, and this one, I hadn't looked on it for a while and now that I look at it, I want it so I may knit on it some more. So it's a, a simple pair of vanilla socks, but I change, I'm making two row stripes. So the main yarn, main color is a uh, Bleu Poussière Pied Bleu. And I'm using a leftover of Crassid Zauberball uh, to make the stripes. And when I run out of this, I will make the rest of the sock plain. And I have another ball, which is the same weight for the second sock. So they will have the same pattern on it. Really enjoy. And the colors are really speaking to me right now. So I may take that up again. So simple uh, vanilla sock, twisted rib to begin. Uh, I think I forgot to make my German twisted cast on, so it's just a regular cast on, but I think it's gonna be stretchy enough. And even when it's not that stretchy, usually socks stay better on my foot, so it's a bit of a catch-22. <laughs> they are harder to put on, but they stay on your foot really well. And then I have a big project that I'm working on. So right now we are uh, hosting a cal at Rive. I'm gonna put the link down below. It's um, a cal for the Aros sweater by Petite Knit. And it's going really well, that cal. We made kits as well in uh, Devonia DK by John Arben. And the people knitting the, from the kits, wow, the sweaters are really beautiful. I really enjoy uh, the stripes these kits are making and I may want one for myself in the future. But I have chosen to make a plain version, so no stripes, just because I had made a lot of stripy sweater uh, sweaters recently. So I made a Vex sweater by Camille Decoteau and um, a No Frills sweater by Petite Knit that I made. Uh, I made a stripy version out of that pattern. So I decided to go plain for my Aros dress because I'm making the dress version and I'm so pleased with the result. So it is a beautiful, com cl complex color, really out of my comfort zone. So it's a brown, warm brown with um, purple undertones and some purple uh, speckles running through as well. Really precious yarn that I'll talk about in a second. 
and I have so it's a fingering and I have mixed in a lace as well and I really really enjoy the construction of that Aros sweater it's a bit I have made a lot of um, raglan so raglan is the construction that you'll see often and whenever I find another construction usually it really is something fresh that I eager to try so this is um, I don't know how you call it but it's quite an unusual shoulder shape but it goes it fits me so well so you start with quick um, quick increases on both sides of these stitches and then you increase for the sleeve so it kind of gives the look of a sewn, in sewn on and set in sleeve but without the hassle of doing that it fits me really well and from what I can see on Instagram it fits most people really well all people really really well and it has this uh, folded neckband as well with just the right uh, just the right curve here it's just the right neckline I should say long sleeves simple sleeves tapered in and uh, yeah so really simple but just really well constructed so I really 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 enjoy it and I'm making the dress version so I have been really disciplined I have so I started the sweater I went through my first um, my first skein of yarn and that landed me landed me somewhere below sleeve separation and then when that skein was over I went back did both sleeves and my neckband well I did the neckband first and then the sleeve this is a good tip actually I uh, I really try to when possible make the the neckband first because it is often when you don't have a neckband when you have to pick up for it and put it at the end it will kind of bring your sweater into the neck because before you do that the neck seems really wide then you pick up and knit uh, for your neckband and it brings everything in so if you have sleeves it can change the length you need so if you have knitted the sleeve first and then you knit the, neck, the neckband sometimes the sleeve can end up being too short just because it brings everything in so I started with the neckband and then I went for my sleeves knit knitted them at the desired length and then I had all the yarn I had left for the length of the dress so I thought if I knit everything I need first and then I know what how much yarn I have left for the dress and I know if if I can make a dress and how long can it be so uh, I had four skeins of the main color and it's quite a um, precious yarn where did I put it it's quite a precious yarn. It's Plum Sock by Les Arts Textiles du Temisquata. And it's a yarn that she did in a, it's a collaboration between Les Arts Textiles du Temisquata and Urso, Urso Yarn Co. So they worked on these together for, I think it was a Valentine's Day special a couple of years ago. So it's a one, one of a kind. You cannot get uh, more of these. So I had four skeins. And I did a little call on Instagram and found another skein from someone who had a whole skein left over from their project. So I could buy this one. And a, a very sweet friend gave me her leftover, which was 25 grams. So I had quite enough yarn. I had quite a lot of yarn, so I knew I could make my dress version. This beautiful skein. And I'm mixing it with some lace by Urso Yarn Co, which is the colorway Mur, a kind of berry. And it brings, it really brings out all the purples in the yarn, which is what I wanted. So together these two yarns uh, gave me the, the DK uh, gauge I needed. So I'm working with the same needle as Petite Knit. I came right on gauge and um, I find my gauge is kind of funny. I find that I can pretty much get 
the right gauge. Like I just put put this in my brain and I will knit at the right gauge. Like I will, if it's, I feel it's a bit looser than my normal technique, I will knit a bit looser and or knit a bit tighter. I just have to keep this in mind for the whole garment, not just for the swatch. <laughs> uh, oh yes. So mixing these two yarns, I find it gives me a really complex color that I really enjoy. Uh, very different for what I usually go for, from what I usually go for. And I have quite enough yarn for the dress. So I am almost at the right length. So it's quite lengthy already. Uh, petite knit dress version goes to her ankles, I think. Uh, it's not what I want. I want to finish it at the knee. Uh, just to mimic my heather dresses by Silverit, which are um, like sweater dresses in a, in a knit fabric, which are really comfy and they stop right at the knee and I really enjoy that silhouette. So I think this is what I'm going for, but I definitely have the choice to go longer if I want because I am not done with my four skeins yet and it's already really long. I am, I would say 10 centimeters before my desired length. So I have not so much to go. And I think you need, she suggests that you go a bit further and fold in a hem for the dress version instead of adding ribbing like you would for the sweater version. For the dress, she suggests a kind of hem. And I think it's what I'm gonna do because I would not like ribbing at my knee. It's definitely a look you can go for, but it's not what I want in this case. I just wanted to finish straight. So yes, really enjoying that knit, really enjoying the construction of this uh, sweater. I think it's not gonna be my last one. I really, really enjoy it. I want a stripy one. I want one of the ones in Devonia <laughs> DK. Uh, maybe for autumn, I could make myself one. So then on to a uh, future project. I have a project that has been dormant for really long, so I'm putting it not in the work in progress, but in the future, past and future projects. <laughs> uh, it is this lovely little sweater by uh, Fiber Tales, but it is a test I was working on for her uh, that got um, delayed, stopped. So I may just write her an email to see if it is starting again for this summer because it is a short sleeve top. Uh, so maybe it could start again that test because I really think it's a design that many people would enjoy. So it's a really simple top with an eyelet pattern that creates these vertical stripes. So it's really lovely. So I'm, uh, I've done quite a bit of this sweater already. I just need to finish the body, but it's not intended to be really long, the body. So I'm almost done with that. And I think the sleeves, I need to go back to the pattern, but I think you, you don't knit a lot before you start the ribbing and picking up for the neckband. So I may just start it again. And if the pattern changes so much that my test is becoming irrelevant, I'll make another one because I want it but I may write to her to see uh, if it's starting again. So the yarn I'm, I'm using for this project is Urso Yarn Co, uh, her Blue Face Laster Base, which is PFB in the colorway Latte, which is a really nice brown. Uh, it's kind of warm and cool at the same time. It has a lot of shades of brown in it and uh, Sometimes it's almost pinkish brown and sometimes it gets really cool. I really, really enjoy that colorway. And I need this in to wear soon because um, it gets really hot really quickly here. There's not much, not much spring in the south of Quebec. It's like winter, two or three weeks of spring and then boom, full summer. So it would be now that I, I would need to wear this. So I think I finish my I will finish my Aros dress and then on to that project. 
And then I need to think about my future projects after that. So I have a couple of ideas, but nothing set in stone. I would like to uh, take one of these skeins from the shop, which is um, self-striping sock yarn from Sonia Tricot, uh, which we just got a restock of. And the colors are so fun. And this is the colorway named after my town where I live, Saint Antoine. And it, uh, yeah, it really appeals to me on a tweed base as well. Simple vanilla socks, self-striping. I think I would really enjoy these. So I may do that, but it's not really a future project socks. It just lives along my other projects. Uh, I think I may want a shawl on my needles next, um, just because I've been knitting a lot of sweaters and I think a shawl would be a nice kind of palette cleanser. Um, and I am thinking of the Norbu by Camille Decoteau, which is a shawl, uh, almost a scarf, because it's a rectangle shape or a parallelogram shape. And it's designed for Noble by Bleu Poussière, which is a really drape yarn with silk. And uh, I don't remember which, but it's really uh, luxurious and silky. So a lot of drape. And I have some Adelina by Emilia Filamen, which is a merino yak yarn, which is also very drapey. So I think I could substitute for that. And uh, it has three colors in the shawl, but very low contrast, which I find so delicate and beautiful. And I want to keep that feature, uh, but I'm hesitating for colors. So the merino yak is a gray base. So all colors are really subtle on it so I will get that low contrast so I have this possibility so I have this deep gray here which is Eucalyptus this bluish gray which is uh, Rita and this yellow gray which is Meteor I think this would be this could be really pretty but I'm not sure about the yellow for myself, I think, I think this is, yeah, this speaks to me. So and I substituted the yellow for a pink, which is a uh, camellia. I think this is really subtle, goes well with my sawyer. I think this is what I'm gonna go for. I would wear this a lot. It's a bit gray for a beautiful day like today, but I think I would wear it a lot, a lot. And it's a beautiful pattern with a lot of lace and texture. I think I would enjoy that. And another uh, possible project is uh, I want another short sleeve uh, summer top, but well, summer, cool summer top, let's say um, spring top. It, and it's a pattern that doesn't exist yet, but I'm gonna write to the designer because I know she had it in testing and life happened and it's not out and i just wonder if it's coming out that i could maybe plan for it or do i need to find another pattern that reminds me of it which is also completely fine but it's uh, designed by Geneviève Dugon uh, she has one out which is the Valerian camisole which is a camisole so a cami uh, really summery top but I don't think I would wear that much. I would prefer her other version, which is not out, which is the uh, Valerian Cardigan, I think. And I saw a version made by one of her, the, the tester. Uh, she made it short sleeve with a lot of ease, well, not a lot, but some ease and in a bright yellow. And I thought it was so joyful, a version. And I would like to make this in this yarn, which is Chaussette by Les Arts Textiles du Temiscuata. A merino BFL untreated base with 20% nylon, so it's a sock base, but I think it would be really pretty uh, as a little cardigan with a texture and lace on it. And the color is a grayish blue, which really, really, really appeals to me. So I would enjoy that. So I need to write a note to the designer to see what is happening with that design or do I need to fix myself on something else? 
so that is it for knitting projects. And I have a couple of sweaters for my son. I'm gonna knit as well. Uh, he is growing out of his current knitted sweaters and he wears them a lot. So I think I'm gonna make a couple more. I have some ideas in mind. So on to sewing. So I have sewn a lot recently, both for the purpose of our classes and for myself. So I have four finished projects to show. Uh, first one I am wearing, but it's gonna be tough to show. Maybe I will um, show it in a different angle. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I cannot show it on myself, so I will uh, film another angle to show you. I've made my, pa my first pair of real jeans. Uh, so I made the ginger jeans by uh, Closet Core in the, um, was it ginger? Yes, in the mid-rise version. But I have added to the rise. So it ha this pattern can come in a low rise, mid rise and a high rise. High rise is usually a bit too high rise for my taste. Uh, mid rise was a bit too mid rise, somewhere in between. So I just modified it, no big deal. And I uh, also went from a smaller size at the waist. So I think I was on a size 16 at the waist to 20 at the hips and I did a straight leg. So I wanted a bit of a mom jeans silhouette, uh, which is not what the ginger is designed for. So that's why I increased size. I went for a size 20 to have some ease on the thighs and I uh, made it straight leg so I can wear it with the bottom folded up and uh, get a bit of the silhouette I wanted. So I'm really happy with that first version. It was made in the, um, in the jeans fabric uh, that was okay, but I have a more expensive, more fancy one for my next pair. I, I wanted to make a first pair to see the fit and think of modifications I want to make before going and cutting into that uh, fancier jeans fabric. Uh, so I'm ready to do that. I will make, I think, exactly the same pair except for one thing. I need to take out um, some length at the back of the waistband. Just because I have a back that really, I don't know how you call it, but it curves in a lot. So a problem I have with jeans from uh, ready to wear jeans is often that I will have too much fabric at the back at the waistband. But when you sew for yourself, that's something you can alter really easily at the pattern phase. So you can alter your pattern pieces so that fits really nice. Uh, so I hadn't made the modification before my first version, just I didn't know if I needed it. And I can pinch out like two inches easily at the back. So it's, my back is really, really goes in. So I can uh, pinch out some ease there to have a really nice fitting pair. And uh, yeah really enjoy. I hadn't had jeans f since before my uh, before my pregnancy. So I was living in dresses and skirts and uh, other type of pants like linen pants and stuff. But I'm really enjoying getting back to jeans just because when I make beautiful jumpers like this, they really want to be worn with a pair of jeans. So I'm glad I have that in my wardrobe. It's really useful. Next up, I have sold myself a Merilo shirt by Dirando. So a little short sleeve shirt uh, to... In fact, it's a bit of a sample for the shop because we had these beautiful prints coming in in all springy colors and just really joyful colors. And I immediately saw it as a little Merilo with short sleeve. So really simple shirt. Um, I always enjoy the fit of the Melilo, so I have made the band color. So really simple. It's quite a quick sew actually because it's few pieces and you don't have a sleeve to set in. It's just a drop shoulder and you have um, this kind of bracelet at the end here, a cuff, sorry. So a sleeve cuff to put in. And I have done one pocket instead of two. I really like the look of one. 
and I have made the simple button bend. It has an option for a concealed button bend as well. I went for the simple one and uh, yeah, and just this beautiful cotton lawn in a beautiful print. Really joyful colors. And all I need now is, is um, green, really deep green like this knitted cardigan to put over it. I cannot knit at the same speed as I sew. <laughs> That's my problem. Maybe next year I will have it. We have one in the shop uh, right now by Emilia Filamen, which is called uh, Vire Anglais, so English green, which is a really just green green. That would be lovely with that, but I cannot knit that fast. <laughs> I need it now. So really simple shirt. So we have um, by Dirando, if I didn't say, the Melilo. We have kits in the shop at the moment to make yourself a shirt. It can be the Melilo, it can be the Archer by Grand Line Studio, the Cali by Closet Core, or the Fairfield Button Up for a men's shirt by uh, Thread Theory. And we have a workshop that goes with that as well if you want to be held by the hand to make your shirt. So really fun project. I always, as I said, enjoy the fit of the Medilo. Glad to have this in my wardrobe. It's fun. It uh, puts me in a good mood. So next up is another garment that makes me really joyful and happy. It's the Zadie Jumpsuit by Paper Theory. So I have two of them, but I think I'm done with trying garments on, so I will insert photos for the second one or another angle of, uh, of shot, of shooting. So um, yeah, Zeddy jumpsuit, this is a short sleeve version and it's done in this gorgeous viscose and linen blend, which we do not have yet in the shop at Rive, but it is coming and I really enjoy the colors of this, uh, it's really like a dusky pink with the little flowers and it's hard to see but it has like a brown mustard center to the flowers so it's really pretty and I have put this on as a finished object but it's not quite done I have to unpick my bias binding finish because I have made this as part of our workshop so I have done the bias binding with an electric blue uh, thread just so it contrasts but as a garment for myself I would like it to match the the fabric so I will unpick it and put in a, a matching thread and I have all the hems to do as well so almost done I should have put it in my works in progress really and I have another version which is in a cut and linen blend by Robert Kaufman which is much more of a transitional piece with longer sleeves and I have made a longer leg and tapered in leg to wear well I'm wearing it right now tons because it's perfect for this weather and this one I know I will enjoy a lot in the hottest days of summer because it feels like you are wearing nothing it is so uh, light and airy and drapey it's yeah I think I will enjoy it a lot so the Zadie, we have made kits for this and we have a workshop if you want to learn how to make it, if you are intimidated to make it um, alone, alone, you can be accompanied by our workshop if you'd like, our online class. And uh, yeah, it's a very accessible jumpsuit. It's my first jumpsuit uh, ever. I wasn't part of the jumpsuit gang before now and now I am because it is so comfy. It's so comfy to wear, it moves with you, it, uh, like it really accompanies you throughout your activities in the day, it, it's yeah, easy to move in. The only thing you have to think about, and it's something you, you get used to very quickly, but first time, it's uh, <laughs> when you go to the toilet, you have to take everything off. <laughs> so um, especially if you have a small child that opens the door of the toilet anytime you are in, well, you have to get used to that as well, to be like almost naked on the toilet. But uh, yeah, it's just the first time that you're kind of surprised. And then it's your new normal. It's okay. 
uh, what else to say? So I have this one is the short sleeve version and the I would rec the patterns legs and it's a quite a wide legged leg and it's I think it's really pretty. And uh, yeah, I hope you want a jumpsuit in your life because I really enjoy mine. Uh, yeah. Something else to say? No, this is it. The fit was quite easy and uh, I think I'm gonna enjoy them. It's easy because of the tie. There's a tie at the waist, uh, which makes for a forgiving fit. If you, if it's a bit too large for you, you can really bring it at the bring it in at the waist with the tie. Um, you you, if you have eaten a large meal and you want to let it out a bit, also possible. So. It really makes work for even fit and it makes the whole process less intimidating. And this fabric is really, 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 really comfy. Uh, so next I have some upcoming projects in sewing. So I have, I am thinking of my wardrobe for this summer. Um, the summers, because of climate change, the reality of climate change, the summers are now really, really different where I live from the summers of my youth, of my <laughs> The summers are really different uh, now from the summers I knew uh, as a child. Oh, well, I, yeah, they are hotter. There's no, <laughs> it's not just a feeling, it's real. They are hotter. So I feel like I need to adapt my wardrobe to enjoy summer because the last couple of summers, well, I had a baby uh, and everything, but even so I felt like I was trapped indoors. Like I was, I didn't have the right clothing to enjoy uh, the hot days. And the reality is that there are so much more of these like really hot days now uh, that I would like feel trapped indoors for weeks at a time in July and August and often in June and even May, we have these. Um, so I want to adapt my wardrobe. Basically, I want to plan a wardrobe as if I was spending the summer in Greece, right? in a really hot climate. Like not those summers I was spending as a child running in the forest with my friends. Uh, like it's not, it's not that cool anymore. Or even where I live, I live in the fields, like in the uh, uh, agricultural area. So there is not so much shade, I have beautiful trees on my yard, but when I go for a walk, it's in the sun. So I need to adapt my wardrobe for this weather so I can enjoy it more because it's the new reality. So uh, yeah, so I have a, a lot of Ugden camis planned. So I have, that's why I brought out these beautiful viscoses by Atelier Brunette. So I want to make myself some Ugden camis and it's just, I am starting to have an idea of what I want for my summer wardrobe, but really yeah, it plans for the really hot weather. And then I can layer if it's not that hot easily. I have everything I need to layer. Um, but yeah, I need those really good. I need good clothing for that weather. So that's my plan. So a few Ugden camis. Um, I have this Sadie jumpsuit, which is perfect. And I have to think, do I want like Pietra pants, like uh, linen pants? I think so. Uh, so maybe a couple of colors. I really have to build it from scratch because I really don't have a good summer. I have dresses, I have summer dresses. I'm fine. Uh, maybe I'll add one or two uh, just to have um, freshness in my wardrobe, but I have good summer dresses. But uh, I like gardening more and more. I work on outside on the yard a lot. So dresses are not so suitable for that. So I need other options. So maybe Pietra pants. I had one pair last summer I enjoyed uh, wearing. So maybe a couple more uh, pairs. I have to think about, I'm not a big short wearer, but perhaps I could be. Maybe I could think of making myself a pair. And uh, yeah, so let's start from there. And I will, I think I will sketch a lot before I start making my summer wardrobe, just to make sure it's like things go together. I'm happy with the look. I'm 
I want to feel good in my clothing this summer is what I'm saying. I want to be able to go outside and feel good good in what I'm wearing, feel I have the right clothing to enjoy being outside more. So the yarns that are here I haven't talked about, but um, these are yarn from the the arrival, uh, the, the update that is going on today at Rive Compagnie. So today is April 15 and we have really nice Urso Yarn Co. yarns coming in, a really lovely spring colors. So I don't have projects for these because um, they are not mine, but I thought they added just a beautiful uh, range of color to this video. So I, just so they could be with us. <laughs> And uh, yeah, bring us joy, beautiful colors at Urso Yarn Co. at Rive today, April 15. So other sewing projects, uh, other than these evolving um, thoughts about my summer wardrobe, I have projects that are more formed in my head, in my mind. So we have these really nice, we call them coton texture, so texture cotton uh, at Rive. So they are really like a washed, cotton and a really nice weight really really soft and drapey but dry because it's a cotton just just a perfect fabric in my mind um easy to work with yeah really really like these uh texture cottons cotton texture and i was looking for a project to uh make with them so we have four colors this is the black and so I just talked about how I want a wardrobe for really hot days and I'm thinking about making something in black, but you know, you're allowed to contradict yourself. So I want to make a dress shirt by uh, Merchant and Mills. So the dress shirt is a really nice dress with a lot of ease and gathers. I can focus here on this. And you have, uh, so this piece at the front uh how would you call this i don't know how you would call it but so you have this piece and then it kind of gathers into it the rest of the shirt dress and you have really nice gathers at the back so this uh front piece here i am thinking i could embroider so you have um you have a seam running through the middle but i will have a look at the pattern and see if i could maybe cut it on the fold so I don't have that seam here and I could have a really nice full front piece that I could embroider before sewing. So my thought is I would like to embroider with my leftover nurtured fine because in this yarn I see a lot of purple and blues and also sometimes there is a bit like a um, black flicks running through so I think it would be really nice and I could um, it's fine enough that I think to make for a nice embroidery weight and I'm thinking I could embroider like so just the front piece of the dress and um, I have a geometric pattern in mind but it's I don't know how it's gonna come out so I'm not gonna say more um, but yeah I think it could be really special and really detailed and just a special piece in my wardrobe of course Embroidering, embroidering in wool means that I will have to wash this by hand always, but it's something I'm prepared to do because it would be like, it's not something I would go and garden in, uh, more for a night out with friends and uh, cocktails. Yes. <laughs> so this is my idea and it's been in my mind for a time, so I think it's gonna happen. And then I have another project in the in the textured cotton. So I have the blue colorway here, which is it looks it's a bit washed out on camera, but it's a really nice um, sky blue. And I want to make finally, 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 I want to make myself a pair of Caroline pajamas by Closet Core Patterns. So it's something I always say I'm gonna make. I have a holiday version in mind. Um, but I never end up doing it just because it's a pyjama. You know, you have other priorities in your making than making yourself nice PJs. But I, if you 
if you could see my pyjama, it's horrible. <laughs> it's really well worn, let's say. Uh, it's still handmade, but it has been made a long time ago and it has lived its life. Like it's ready to become um, like washcloths or something. <laughs> or paint, paint cloth. <laughs> paint clothing like for for painting um so i could i could have new pajamas i think it wouldn't be such a luxury and uh so the caroline pajamas by closet core has a really nice short version so you have with a pair of shorts and a short sleeve top so i think i would like to make this because this is such a breathable fabric i think it would be good for a summer pyjama and I would feel so good in it to have like a luxury pair of pyjamas and I would like to add this blush piping by Atelier Brunette I think it would be really beautiful and even I could add some uh, bias binding to finish the seams inside the pyjama to make it really 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 special and I'm thinking this Viscose by Atelier Brunette, Palmetto of White. We have the bias binding for it. I could add inside the pajama and making something really, really special. So that is my plan and I hope I go through with it because I know I would enjoy a pair of good looking pajamas so much. So that is it for me and my sewing plan. So as I said, it's a um, I'm thinking about them, I'm, I'm working through them and deciding what I'm going to make uh, because I'm a bit over adding things to my wardrobe that have like, I would say, like that stands alone. Like for dresses it's alright because you wear them, it's a whole garment in itself, same for jumpsuit, jumpsuits but like with my knitting and I need to think about pairing things in my wardrobe and I'm gonna make a camis and stuff and uh, yeah, I need to think how it's gonna work just so and like in which order to make things just so I'm ready for summer and I have everything I want to uh, be well clothed this summer. <laughs> uh, other than that, uh, some news about the garden. So I'm really, really getting into uh, gardening. It's been a few years in the making. So when we first moved here two years ago, so I live, I should say, I live in the countryside near Montreal, but I have a really, well, a, a quite a substantial yard. Uh, it's not acreage, but it's, uh, I don't know, maybe it's an acre. <laughs> I don't know. It's quite big, uh, but manageable big. And um, so we have space for a really nice veggie garden. And the first year I was here, I just used the garden made by the previous owner and planted tomatoes in it and got a lot of tomatoes. And uh, then last year I put in an extra bed and um, a few other vegetables. And this year I feel ready. Well, we feel ready because I'm making this with my sister, Alice. She helps me a lot with that. Uh, we feel ready to expand the veggie garden. So that is our plan. So right now we have these, uh, so I have two like uh, standalone veggie beds, like on, uh, yeah. So I have two beds made of wood that I can, you know, move around. I'm uh, sorry, I forgot the word for it, for them uh, that my dad made last year. So these are gonna stay there, but we have like two beds that are in a uh, plain, like in the soil but they are just framed, like they are framed really long rectangles. And the idea was that with the frame, we made the alleys, uh, so the bed is the right size that you can work all around it and have access to the whole thing. And we made the space between the beds big enough for the tractor to go through and mow the lawn, just to keep everything neat and under control. But uh, what happens is, as the, the vegetables grow, they kind of come out of the bed and into the alleyway. And then you cannot mow the lawn anymore because the tractor would just rip everything out. So it, comes, it becomes a mess by August, I would say. 
and I have I enjoy my time in it less just because it's uh, full of weeds it's like it's just uncontrollable I don't need it to be neat and tidy that's not my vibe I just need some wear in between that I feel like it's planned out it's not just growing out of control and that the weeds are taking over the veggie and the veggie are taking over the grass and yeah so I'm trying something new this uh, summer so we are taking out the frames and really making a large rectangle patch of veggie garden with, uh, you know, like, uh, how would you call that? Just raised parts. So you would have raised parts, but just made of uh, soil for the veggies to grow, like long, narrow, uh, raised beds, if you like, but with no frame. And in between, it's uh, just like wood chips. So you keep the weeds under control. So you wouldn't have to mow any lawn in that rectangle. And uh, the vegetables could kind of go into the alleys with no problem. So that is our plan. So we need to plan a weekend to make that happen. But it's really exciting. And uh, we also have uh, really young pear trees that we planted last year. Uh, that are near the veggie garden and I want them to kind of be part of it. So I have done research on um, orchard uh, orchard uh, veggie gardens. So in French we call it uh, potager verger. So it's instead because tra traditionally you would have your, your orchard and your veggie garden. Two things. Just because uh, the fruit trees create a lot of shade so you would keep them separate. But I would like to have them together, just it's be, it's better for all the insect life, uh, so all the insects and just for the variety of your garden, if you will, and to have them sort of mixed together. And you have also vegetables that could enjoy a bit of shade, so they could be really nice partners. So we planted these pear trees uh, in the grass, in the middle of the, the grass, but if you want them to be part of your veggie garden, you have to uh, like plant around it really soon. You cannot plant a veggie garden in an existing orchard just because the trees will have made roots near the surface. So you won't be able to grow things or not easily uh, between those roots. So when you have, so you need to plant these, plant these together so the trees are really young and the idea is to plant around them already so that we kind of disturbs those surface roots and the tree is forced to go and dig deeper. So then the surface around it stays uh, rootless <laughs> so we can always plant. So it's I'm kind of geeking out on this <laughs> and enjoying planting it. Uh, we'll see how it works out. And we have apple trees uh, coming this year. We have to go get them in the month. So we have three of them to plant in our garden as well. So it's really exciting. Maybe I'll grab a few raspberry plants while I'm at it at this really nice garden center. So that is it for me. Um, oh, I forgot to say all my seedlings are doing really well. <laughs> so really excited for the garden this year. Uh, I hope you are well. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, spring inspiration episode. I hope you have enjoyed my little prelude for this episode. It was uh, from my heart to yours with full of vulnerability. <laughs> uh, leave me a comment if you'd like. I always enjoy reading you and responding. So that is it for me. I'll see you next time. Take care.